What's up, guys? Welcome to another local band, Smoker. And I'm your host, is Tyler Most BG, and I'm hanging out with my buddy Tim Price, I believe, who started the faction. Is that correct? You started it. The fa- That's at- correct with my business partner Stephen. Yeah. Okay. At the faction live is where you're going on Facebook, and if you have uh, obviously a smartphone, you're gonna want to download the faction radio app, which I listen to all the time. But sometimes, oh my man, I-, I don't know if it, you- if you can tell like where your listeners are on like when people that play it. If you ever see one that says Hesperia, California, that's me. But I have oh, to t- amazing. half the time I'm listening, I gotta turn it off because I'll recognize a band that has submitted. And I'm like, no, 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 because oh, I don't want to hear it. He's not I, doing reaction. Yeah, I like to do them like live on the spot. It doesn't happen very often, but yeah. Anyways, how's your day going, sir? Uh, it's going really well. It's about 10 in the morning here. Uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, my state that I'm in in Australia at the moment is in lockdown, or at least part of the state. Um, so I'm in my office as such. I'm, in, I'm at work, but no one else is here at the moment. Uh, and I've had to order in my coffee rather than go to the cafe to get it. And, uh, yeah, it's all a little bit lonely in the office sometimes. I I would imagine it's lonely. I I was talking to somebody yesterday, uh, a band called Disgust. Have you ever heard of Disgust? Yes. Okay. Uh, he, uh, he was saying that you guys can only go five kilometers right now. That's your, like your quarantine limitation. We go by miles over here. So I don't know how far that actually is uh that'd be about it's probably about three miles well it's not far at all three and a bit yeah yeah that's not that far at all how yeah how and when did the faction start uh 2017 so late 2017 uh it was in development since earlier that year so my my business partner steven as has been obsessed with radio his whole life. He's been, he was the kind of kid, he's he's two years older than I am. Um, In Australia, we have these charts. Uh, He's been obsessed with radio charts, you know, like the top 40 chart and what's called the ARIA chart, which is like the billboard charts in in America, right? Um, And, you know, in the 90s when he was, you know, sort of 10 through to... 16 17 or so he would each week you would go to the cd store and you could get the aria chart on a piece of paper if it was free you could take it and he he memorized them he he's the kind of guy that just like obsessed over and memorized these things and um so he's just always wanted to have a radio station and we really um he saw an opportunity within the heavy music world because it is a niche Mm -hmm. because it is a, it isn't the mainstream thing. You're not trying to be all things to everyone. You're trying to cater to, you know, that one sort of party. And, um, you know, here in Australia, you know, we don't have Sirius XM uh, and we don't have like the college radio network. I wonder why it's it's satellite radio. It seems like a satellite could just send it anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you'd think so, but yeah, you can't, you can't even buy a, you know how you have to buy a subscription to Sirius. Mm -hmm. I've I've looked into it because I want to listen to it. I suppose I could, if I got a VPN, Um, but you know, anyway, the point is, is that, uh, yeah, we don't have like the college radio system either uh, here in Australia. So, but we are in a unique position in that, the um we do have a government funded like, like kind of like the uk you know how the uk has bbc yeah BBC so Radio. here in, in australia we have uh, uh the abc the australian broadcasting corporation and they in the late 70s uh started a youth brand of that and that started out as double j and then it became triple j when fm uh came in right And so on Triple J, there are two heavy shows. They go for three hours each and they go from 10 p.m. till 1 a.m. 
on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. That's like, as far as like radio goes in Australia, other than like small community radio shows or like the faction, that's the sum total of like heavy music uh, radio in Australia. So you're, you're feeding the need because six hours a week just ain't enough. Exactly. Exactly. It. And, it, and it's really specific too. So three hours, <coughs> pardon me, on three hours on Tuesday night is metal. And then on Wednesday night is punk and hardcore. Right. So my goal for the faction was to go 24 seven with that and be a blend of those two things. Be, you know, the, the, the playlist will, will, will basically be a, a mashup of those kind of things and be a way of breaking bands uh, here in Australia. Um, and it was a, like, it's, it's been slow going, man. Like it, we've, uh, like we've, we've made some serious progress, but like it, it's, we, I, I wouldn't say we've hit like the zeitgeist yet, uh, but it's, it, you know, to get, you know, the support of people like yourself, like, to, to, to know that there's someone like so far away that's really loving what we do is like just mind blowing to me. Um, and I, and you know, the, the same goes, like I, I have like, utmost respect for like, man, you are on the grind on the hustle every day and I see it, man. And I, and I, like, it's just, I'm so impressed by your like every day you're at it, man. And I just think that's, it's I, I so, wish um, I could do more. Um, I probably yeah. pay, I don't want to say too much, but I probably pay 50% of all the bills I get from local band now. Like, and that was never oh, the case, amazing. but I'd like to get it to a hundred percent. So we're, of course, we of still course. got to do some of the little stuff on the side every now and then. But uh, what, what is your personal... Congratulations on your wedding too, by the way, that wasn't that long ago. Oh, I appreciate it. It was uh, 2019, but it doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. T l last year would have felt like a weird. Yeah. I couldn't, we couldn't have pulled it off last year. <laughs> yeah. Who is your personal favorite band of all time? Just your personal favorite. It's Rage Against the Machine. Wow. So you're stoked on the reunion. Oh man. And and then and then it just never they never because they were gonna come to Australia and then it just never happened. I'm sure they will when they can. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's gonna be a must attend. Did did you yeah. ever did you ever play any instruments growing up or you ever do vocals or anything? I've never heard any yeah. music from yourself. Uh I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a drummer, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, how, uh, I've played in a couple of bands. Um, nothing in the like really heavy space. Um, I'm I'm a terrible, terrible double kicker. I, I don't I don't possess that kind of coordination. Um, but I played in like a really like sludgy, heavy blues sort of uh, you know bordering on sort of uh, you know desert stoner rock sort of stuff. Single kick um, stuff. Single kick stuff. Yeah, but I managed to throw a couple of little triplets in here and there. You there know? you go. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I also played, and I was sort of involved creatively in that band. And then I, after that, oh no, I lie. I played in like a, a sort of a sort of sound gardeny style sort of band when I lived in. I lived in. I grew up in this tiny little town called Rockhampton, uh, in, north of here. And I played in a band called the Origin Complex back then, and we, it was sort of like a sound garden, kind of mixed with sort of more proggy elements. That's cool. Um, yeah, and the guitarist and that was like obsessed with like, with sort of like Caius and and you know really fuzzy sort of stuff. Um, but we had a clean vocalist, so it, it was always a weird sort of mismatch. It was good though. Um, Sounds fun. Yeah, and then um, and then yeah, I played drums in a like a glam rock band. Uh, so you had all the makeup, you had all the makeup and eyeliner singer. and all that stuff on. Hell yeah! <laughs> I used yeah, to do yeah. too. Uh, fronted by a burlesque performer. Cool. So she would she would strip while she was singing, and that and, is unique. Uh, yeah, that is unique for sure. And we and we toured through Europe. Um, we played through like uh, France and Germany and Spain. Yeah, that's Very cool. cool. So yeah. you, that was actually one of my questions: is uh, have you ever or recently able to leave Australia? But you kind of just answered that by going on tour to Germany. Um, 
That, I mean, that was back in 2012, 2013. So. Where else have you visited in the world? Uh, I've been to Toronto. Okay. Uh, I went over for Canadian Music Week in, I think, 2013 as well. Uh, or maybe maybe 14. And, uh, yeah, I went over there. I was managing a band uh, at that time. I was managing a, uh, it was like, man, you're bringing up all these things make me sound like I've had this like really weird and wacky. You've had a hell of a uh, life, brother. Career. Adventurous. Um, <laughs> because yeah, I, I used to manage they were like an eight piece, uh, like folk, uh, folk, like pirate themed sort of band. Uh, they were called the good ship. So kind and, of like uh, a, were, like a Lagerstein with extra members. Uh, less heavy. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Less heavy. Actual folk. Yeah. Not folk metal. Cool. I yeah. Can dig it. And so there was like an accordion and, you know, uh, horns and the whole ukuleles shabam. and all sorts of stuff. It was, it was pretty wild. Have you ever heard of, have you ever heard of NAMM? N-A-M-M? -M? Yeah. You, if you ever get a chance to come to California to go to NAMM, it's like five days, but it, it's literally like. It's got to be in the millions of square footage. Like it is, it is seriously like, I can't even describe it. It's probably like a hundred football fields combined of, okay. of musicians and bands and instruments and technology right. yeah, that's coming like out. It's like a marketplace, right? Like you basically get a stall and people come just kind of, but I went once last year and I could only yeah. get, you, you kind of have to be like invited. It's not something you can buy a ticket for. And I, oh, I got uh, an invite from a buddy, but I could only get myself in. And yeah. I don't, I would definitely go again, but I was totally lost. I was totally yeah. lost. Like I didn't know anyone and it's just so much going on. You need, you need more than one day to see it all. But I, if yeah. you ever go, man, let me know. And I'll be down to meet you there and hang out. Amazing. Dude, uh, if I was coming to LA, like you'd be the first person I'd hit up. Like there's, yeah. there's absolutely. We're going out um, drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking and smoking. There you go. But um, is it safe to the, say? I'm sorry, you go. There's a. We have a similar thing here, and it's not that big, but it's it's getting there. Is uh, here in Brisbane. There's a conference called Big Sound, and uh, Big Sound is it's kind of the equivalent of uh, of like South by Southwest. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, that's like it happens. It didn't happen in person last year. Uh, but they're going for physical again this year. And so that's been happening since the early 2000s. And I've been to everyone since 2006. And uh, yeah, it's where I get a lot of the business I do uh, every year out of that doing, you know, just taking meetings and seeing bands and, and chatting and yeah. So it, it's endlessly helpful. So if one day I do get to come over to NAM, I totally will. So... In addition to running the 24 seven radio, you, you also manage bands on the side. Well, I do, I do PR for bands. I do publicity. How would, bands. how would, uh, a band go about hiring your services? How would they get in contact with you? I mean, just hitting us up on email. So, I mean, our website is just collisioncourse.com.au. Um, I mean, being that your audience is potentially like very American focused. Um, I mean, we're, we're pretty Australian focused. Um, so we may not be a, of as much use to them as, as if they were an Australian act, but, um, at the same time though, yeah. I've noticed that like dance, Gavin dance and American bands still get publication through collision course. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm only doing, I'm, Technically, I'm only meant to be doing the Australian publications for those bands. Um, but so I just like slinging stuff to you, man. Cool. Those are stuff I can't play, but I, I definitely yeah. jam Dance Gavin Dance on the side for sure. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, there's just stuff that I know you'll like. There's stuff that I, you know, I just, I like sending to you because you're a great guy. I, I know you just love and jam out on music. And, Hell yeah. yeah. I, I do have a weed question, but... I do want to say of of all the bands that you submitted I me, mean, I think I've told you this before. Um, yeah. Stepson, yeah, Wind Waker, and yeah. Two Octavia. Yeah, I'm just gonna say goodbye to them now because they're gonna be around the world sooner or later. 
Um, I, I talk to Will every now and then from Win, and I'm, I'm I'm excited to hear some new stuff from them. But who who of your artists that you work with on a regular basis, I, it's probably hard to be like, this one's my favorite because the other ones will get pissed off. But is there one that you kind of, I don't want to say push them more than the others, but is there one that stands out, like one of your artists that uh, stands out more than the others too for some reason? I mean, Wind Waker definitely is the one that I'm probably, you know, the most proud of uh, in terms of just identifying them right from the second I heard the mixes for this record. Um, they, I, it was at Big Sound. Uh, I had already worked with them on a couple of singles before that. Uh, New Infinite was the one that was had just that's so, my favorite, that's okay, my favorite song the, by them the that's my favorite song by them oh nice yeah. so new infinite i had done early that year um must have been 2018 and uh, i'd done a single for them and that got a few runs on the board they applied to come and showcase that big sound and they got it based on the strength of like the media coverage and the shows that they booked off the back of that they came and did big sound <clears throat> at big sound they showed me the mixes for mm -hmm. my empire that record and i flipped out and i said who who mixed this who produced this it was chris and right Thomas put his hand up it was chris it's yeah the, band, the guy in the band and i was like dude this is next level you you need like yeah, we're doing this. And they'll really like gung ho at that moment. They were like, we're not signing this to anyone. We're not taking this to a label. We're doing this one independently. And we want to, we want to prove that we can like that this thing can, can go far. Um, and then, you know, when the time comes, any offer that we get for any sort of label is going to be right up here, you know, and that's, you know, if we even want to take it. Um, so I knew, you know, and they were like, we, we think you're the guy to help us, you know, take it on this journey. <clears throat> so I did. And, um, yeah. So the first, the first single, like had this really sort of tongue in cheek video clip with it. And I knew it was really cheeky and that, like, it really showed off their personality as well. But my empire, the single that came after it, I knew that was the actual, that that's the banger that's the single and um so we used the first single to like to like beef up what yeah. had come before it and to trade off on that they'd been a big sound and people were getting interested and um and the second single got added to triple j which is that radio station that i was talking about before and like here in australia that holds a lot of weight yeah sort of like the next crop whoever you know they're going to be the ones to watch, you know, and it generally informs, uh, you know, booking agents, managers, labels, the whole lot. It's like, all right, that's the time to, to jump on, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I, I helped them secure a booking agent. I used the success of that to like pitch them over to a booking agent, got them signed uh, to a guy that I really, really like and trust. And I think he's like the perfect guy for them. Uh, this guy named Tom and yeah, it's just, it's kind of gone from there and they've like, they're working on the next record now. Um, they let me hear something you know, about, man, it was probably, it had to have been like seven or eight months ago and I have not yeah. heard anything. It was obviously like a rough, rough demo, but it sounded cool. Um, it's been so long. I don't even remember what it sounds like though, but I imagine <laughs> you probably heard most of the new stuff. Okay. No, it's all a no, surprise. No, no. Chris keeping it locked no, no. up. Lock yeah. the key. Well, see, since then we've worked with so many, like, so two Octavia is another one that he produced. Uh, you know, The Last Martyr, uh, Rumors. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, like this, this dude is the, like, he's the next producer, man. He's the, he's the future. He's, uh, Chris, yeah. Chris Lilac, is that his name? Lilac. Yeah. Lilac. Yeah. I've talked yeah, to him before. Yeah. He's a cool dude. Yeah. Uh, so obviously Australia has, weird weed laws so weird that yeah. there is no weed allowed is that that's correct 
it's kind of it's kind of getting it's getting to a bit of an equilibrium at the moment so the like here in queensland if you get a prescription now you can there are dispensaries oh, okay but it has okay. to be but it has to be for you know medical what it what are the purpose. so like over here prior to it, it being like recreational everywhere it was medical but it yeah. was so everyone wanted to give you the medical card if you went to the doctor you just be like doctor i got a pain in my back he's like weed it was like that it was like that easy it was that easy is it that easy there or is it you have to have like cancer or something more drastic i've not looked into it um but i i think it is a little like certainly i think you know women could probably approach it for things like you know menstrual pain you know endometriosis pcos that sort of stuff mm -hmm. um probably back pain uh chronic back pain i would say would be would be a thing um but yeah i mean i think we just probably need a little bit more of a progressive government uh in in power here before we get it more sort of widely legalized i would say you know i mean they uh, it blows my mind that we haven't because i mean if you look at places like california places like uh where was the other place over there that legalized it really early was it texas no no uh the, the, the denver colorado yeah yeah colorado yeah yeah, yeah. so um it, the the economy is just like flourishing booming. right like, booming absolutely going crazy because you can tax it and it's and, it's, and they do a like, lot and my God, like the, I just, I can't believe more governments haven't got onto this. Like, it's just another thing you can tax. Right. Like all your roads and, are and, now paved because it got paid for yeah, by weed. <laughs> exactly. And I, I does my head in. I don't understand. It'll happen sooner and, or later. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, let's see. And okay, dude, so once it is legalized, let's get some local band smoke out of Australia going. Like, let's do it. You know, it's funny you bring that up. Uh, like two years ago, I forgot who it was, but like two years ago, somebody reached out to me. Well, first, somebody in Canada reached out to me about doing that. And I was like, yes, and there is a local band, Smoke Out Canada. It, it's, yes. they, they probably shoot one episode a week, but it's cool. Um, and then somebody in Australia asked to do the same thing. And I was like, yeah. And we kind of went back and forth about how I would like them to kind of set it up, but they would control it. And I yeah. never heard from him again. And I mean, we went back like 20 messages back and forth, and I never heard from that guy again. But well, I, let, let me just tell you, I've been waiting. Okay. For it to be legalized, and then when it is, like, I'll call you right away. On that. I'll call you um, right away. We'll set up some. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think this is, it's, a, <coughs> it's going to be a booming industry, man. Definitely. I have kind of a yeah. random question for you. For some yeah. reason, here in America, there are so many damn Australian gold hunting shows. I mean, there's like seven. There's so many. I've and somebody had the same reaction that I interviewed recently. And I, my question for you is, because there's so many, have you ever gone searching for gold in Australia? Uh, one, they don't play those shows here. Um, <laughs> there's so uh, many. It surprises me that there are seven. I watch almost because... all of them. I don't know why, but I like watching people find big ass gold nuggets. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, yes, I have. Um, because I come from like a town called Rockhampton just west of Rockhampton is a gold gold rush town called Mount Morgan okay and Mount Morgan is basically a ghost town now it's coming back a little bit because it's it eventually like it's like sort of local government thing all got merged in with Rockhampton when it was on its own it was on its knees uh, and it's kind of coming back because now it's got a bit of infrastructure and all that sort of stuff Anyway, but the every couple of years is like, we're going to open the gold mine again. There's still rivers of gold down there. Um, but yeah, I've been at like, there's like little tourist things you can go to where you can pan, pan for gold. Uh, I've done that. And uh, I've also gone panning for uh, just d a little bit further west of Rockhampton is a place called Sapphire and Emerald. And you can guess what you can find there. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, you go panning for it and, uh, in the little stream and, and whatever. 
That's cool. Yeah, absolutely. Is there? Um, go for it. I was gonna ask: Is there is there anything? Is there any shows? Is it like vice versa of what I just asked? Is there is there, <laughs> is there anything that like? They're, we're filming people in America, but we can't see it, and it's shown over there. Yeah, maybe. Um, there's probably a lot of. Um, I mean, we we get just about all of your programming here because we, you know, Australia kind of simps for the US. Um, but uh, probably a lot of the like, um, what are the like the porn shop? Oh yeah, porn stars. Like, yeah, like we love those they're, okay they're, cool um yeah, I watch, no, I watch all those too. that whole that whole thing about you know like pin my ride and porn stars and um you know all of those sort of reality shows um i've seen every think, episode of wentworth you guys you guys watch wentworth i've seen everyone yeah i mean that was like there was a um there was a show in the seventies that that's kind of based on um, called prisoner 96 or number 96 or something like that. And um, it was set in Wentworth prison as well. And um, it was like, uh, I think it was set in a, a women's prison and um, it was a tri- piece of trivia. It was like the first like lesbian kiss on camera like in in um, at least australia on australian programming yeah it's always a big deal when it's like the first of something like that yeah yeah uh i'm full of like useless trivia like that dude i speaking of speaking of that what what are some of your favorite movies i'm kind of like the same with i'm like a musical encyclopedia but uh yeah yeah. what are some of your kind of movies Uh, the funny thing was is like i've i've just started a bit of a podcast with my mate doug uh, just outside of all of this, uh, outside of like my business and all that. Um, just because I, I really like just having something, a little project on the side, just, and I can talk all day. Um, and we got onto the topic of Die Hard with a Vengeance. Um, because like, it's not generally like everyone's favorite. Everyone loves the original Die Hard, right? Um I like, we I like the one with Sam Jackson where they're like going from A to B back to C just to defuse the bomb yeah. and stuff. I can yeah. dig it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, we both just found out while we're recording this podcast that we both just really love that film. Um, and yeah, we just joked about it endlessly. Um, but we got onto the topic. Well, how we got onto the topic was it was about like what would be the film that you would choose if you could like only ever watch one more film in your life, that was it. Like you can only watch that one. That's it. Um, and his was Die Hard 3. Um, mine, and like, it was a bit of a controversial one because like, obviously like Star Wars means a lot to me, but um, yeah, up there was definitely like Terminator 2. Oh yeah. Uh, or, or Predator. Um, and you know, but yeah, really, like on the other side of things, like the I, I really love Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. Uh, it's like criminally, criminally underrated film. It's so good. Um, and uh, and and weirdly, The Beach, the the movie The Beach. Oh yeah, with DiCaprio. Yeah. Um, There's a new movie uh, coming out that's kind of based on that from M Night Shyamalan. Oh, uh, it's called old. old? Yeah. yeah, that looks kind of creepy. With, when they're on yeah, the, the beach the and it like trailer. ages them like ex- exceedingly fast, it looks good. Yeah, the trailer uh, really disturbed me mm-hmm. for that. Um, just like their children just suddenly being adults, but their mind is still a child. Yeah, and like that really disturbed. Look, because they are distressed. And that bothered me. I was like, ooh, ooh, like gave me the heebie-jeebies, man. Like, because the, the the young girl who is in like an adult body now is just like she is stressing out. Yeah. And I was like, that is tension, man. Like that is like body horror. Like you've never like, you know. Uh, it's a, it's gonna be a must see for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's I, I probably wouldn't recommend it for someone with anxiety. Like that that yeah. would be a 
Don't watch that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's what's one thing that you haven't accomplished yet that you are is getting close to being accomplished or still still a little far away, but it's it's the main goal. Yeah. Um it's probably a bit of an old school sort of goal, but um I'm real I've worked with bands. So like I said before, you remember I said about the ARIA charts? So they also have an awards ceremony each year for like, you know, best album, best, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's working with a band that wins an ARIA award. Um, I, I have been twice to the ARIAs with bands that have been nominated, but they didn't win. Um, but yeah, one day, like, and, and it's, and it's like, I guess it's just one of those sort of old school, like Australia, like when I got into the industry, like I used to watch those awards and think like, no, I, like, I, I think that other band should have won or, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I was always really like championing the rock bands or the, you know, the heavier bands and just being like, oh, they got, you know, they got, they got it ripped out from under them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> They'll get there. One, one of them yeah, will win that I, you represent for so. sure. What would you say is the best concert you've ever attended? Uh, I've got two here. Uh, one was The Prodigy. Ooh, never got to see them. Oh, man. I actually think they're working on another album. They are, yeah. Um, so I saw The Prodigy. So we used to have, the, like, the original, original, like, big scale festival here in australia it started in the early 90s was a thing called big day out mm -hmm. uh and it's uh it's, it's no longer a thing but in its last couple of years it was bought out by a company called c3 who run like Lollapalooza, oh wow and what have you over in the over in the u.s and um they they would always put on like side shows so like that had you know like a really big um you know festival bill but then like the day before and day after various bands would play side shows. Um, and I got given a free ticket to go along and see the prodigy the, the day before big day out. And uh, so I wasn't expecting to go. I got one in the afternoon and just went along and it was like, and because of the festival lineup, they kind of just put on like other bands from the festival to open for them and stuff like that. And so they just had DJs uh, or like bands come and do DJ sets before the Prodigy started. So like Hot Chip uh, supported and I think an Australian electronic act. But man, the thing that really like brought this like show together for me was that never before had I seen at one gig that wasn't like a festival where, you know, there's all sorts of stuff involved. EDM people, punk and metal people all together at the same event and getting along and like just being all about this band. Like it was, it was just the camaraderie of it was just amazing. And like there were ravers and there were, you know, metal heads and everyone was moshing and it was, just amazing and um and it was the heaviest thing i've ever heard and it was so like the energy coming off the stage was just phenomenal like i i've never seen anything like it since and it yeah yeah Man, keith, keith flint and liam would like the energy that they have is just had rip but like you know just whew. Yeah. and then the other one um was i saw uh han zimmer uh oh, wow. so the guy the guy who you know did yep. all of the star wars the Dark Knight soundtrack and you know uh pirates of the caribbean oh no john Kinda williams did star wars not han zimmer i'm sure no 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 um <clears throat> you know he did like the man of steel soundtrack and wonder woman and you know like and just seeing him and he brought, so he has this sort of eight or nine piece band that he has that he like, you know, Johnny Ma, like from the Smiths is in it. And, uh, you know, just like these crazy musicians, he's got a drummer, he's 
got this amazing bass player, um, uh, all these weird instruments. And then the line behind him is like an orchestra. He's got like a you know, mini orchestra behind him. And then behind that, he's got a choir. Wow. And it's absolute, like, there's nothing else like it. And he plays on everything. He doesn't just conduct. He plays as well. So some things he plays piano on, sometimes he plays guitar. Sometimes he would play some whack African instrument that like no one's ever seen before, <laughs> you know. And um, and then he'll bring out like guest singers as well. So like, you know, the gladiator theme, he brought out the like the woman who s- sings that, you know, old like Roman Latin thing. She's mm. Australian, so he brought her out. She sung that. The guy, uh, you know, he did the Lion King soundtrack. So he brings out the the guy who sung the ah, name, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> him and his daughter come out and sing that, like. And that dude was homeless when he was found to sing that, like. And Hans Zimmer just like plucked him out of nowhere and just like. So now he travels the world with Hans Zimmer singing this, you know, couple of songs, like. It's absolutely phenomenal. And like, I, yeah. And dude, let me tell you, I don't know if you like follow me on socials or anything like that and see that like, I'm like kind of on a bit of a fitness journey. And I like, I really, I have seen that. Yeah. And from big to small. Like, I really, <laughs> like, I, like, I really eventually want to look like Jason Momoa, man. Like, that, that dude's like, an axe right and what i found out man because he was in australia filming aquaman at the time that i saw hans zimmer and because he's involved in the whole dc world and all of that sort of stuff jason momoa came to the shot and but they snuck him like lights went down they snuck him in real fast and just sat him down and just like no one saw right he was like two seats behind me, man. And I like I didn't know. Someone took a photo. They were like, I can see you. And like, and then he ducked out at like half time. He was like, and because people started to recognize him. So he just like ducked out and just he's gone. But people sent me a photo later. It was like circled me, circled Jason Momoa. I'm like, you couldn't have texted me this like when he was there. <laughs> what what you just go, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, dude. Oh, it's probably a good thing I like they didn't because I would have been like, like you want to you want to watch the show anymore? You'd have been like, Jason, come on, I got a spot over here, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So, um, yeah, and I mean that was just phenomenal. Like just to just all of the movies that you know take. It, I'm a very visual person, so it took me back to all those moments in the movies, and the I was on the edge of my seat, my jaw was. Just, on the floor the whole time absolutely awesome. phenomenal that is incredible yeah uh, and it, there was a, a, there's this amazing cellist that he has in his band called tina guo g-u-o and i didn't realize who she was like at the start of the show she's playing and i just went oh man this woman needs to be in a metal band like she plays like a metal musician and and whatever She's and I didn't realize I knew who she was. She she was the person who wrote the Wonder Woman theme. She and Hans Zimmer wrote it, and you know that really like wild Amazonian, you know. If I heard it, I I've only seen Wonder Woman yeah. once, but I don't I don't remember what the song sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Listen to it after this. It, like she wrote it and she plays it like she's a metal musician as well. That's and, awesome. And she plays it on this like electric cello and it's. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so <laughs> sick. That's so tight. sick. What okay, so you're on an island. Yep. And you can only bring one album with you on this island. Yeah. What is that album? I mean, it, it's always gonna be self titled by Rage. I me. knew you were gonna say Rage, but I just didn't know which one. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Battle for Los Angeles or I, I just gotta go back to the one that, that ignited it for me, I think. Like I can't can't really go there's not a bad song on that record, like I, I I agree with that and Evil Empire. Probably no bad songs in either one of those two. Yeah, yeah. And I, I do like I do like Evil Empire. Um, in that like they've really branched out and tried a few different things. So like 
things like Year of the Boomerang and Timey um, and Revolver and stuff like that are like pretty different for mm. them. Um, probably wouldn't have sat on the first record at all. Yeah, Morello, um, Morello started to get like really crazy with his funky sounds and stuff on that on that, on that record. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, have you ever watched like there's there's plenty of footage on YouTube of them pre album release like playing live. I've not seen and, it. Oh yeah, go go look it up. There's plenty of footage. There's like, um, there's even like the footage of like the first time they ever play like Killing in the Name and and. Uh, bomb track and stuff and like the songs are slightly different and and all that sort of stuff they're playing in like a public park it's it's really cool um but yeah i think the first album like just had that fire because they had been like these were the 10 songs that they had uh in their in their you know uh in their kit bag for so long that like they were just like practice down to like this the sharpest point they could be you know and then they were like okay we got to follow that up and not that i don't think that evil empire is as sharp but i think it, they experimented and tried and they didn't live with those songs for maybe quite as long yeah um before it came out so like yeah i mean it's all good. Like even the even the album full of covers they did, um, I've gone back to like really, um, like kind of appreciate now. I didn't really at the time, um, but like their cover of like, uh, how could I just kill a man by Cypress Hill, is just phenomenal. Um, and yeah, like I even came to love Audio Slave. Um, <laughs> After, because at first I was really like, no, I like my Soundgarden and I like my Rage Against the Machine and I like them apart. Yeah. And and I just resisted for so long. And then that first album. So good. Just amazing. He just, just amazing. he has such a unique voice. It was another, yeah. it was another sad loss when we lost him, when we lost Chris. But yeah, yeah. He, he has such a, he has one of those voices where you hear it and you just know right away who it is because nobody could yeah. sing like that style. Yeah. Well, dude, that's, actually, that's actually all the questions I had. Um, we oh, kinda, really? We kind of blew through them fast. Oh. Uh, I'm happy to keep chatting, man. I'm enjoying that. Yeah, let, we can chat a little longer. Um, let me see if I can think of something. Do you play any sports? Or do you like? Do you follow uh, any sports teams or anything? Uh, probably of, of all sports, I, I dig basketball. Um, I, I played basketball when I was young, um, and, and like more recently I've got into like powerlifting and weightlifting and that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, I've been like, I've always been a bigger sort of dude. Like I've always, and my dad really tried to get me into it when I was like 13 or so. Um, there was an Olympic coach that had moved to our, our town. And he, for some, I don't know how he met him, but he knew, he met this guy and knew him. He's like, oh, my boy's, my boy's a big lad. Well, we should get him involved, you know? Um, and at, at the time, I just thought he meant, you know, maybe do some machines and, you know, and just, just work out. And he's like, nah, nah, boy, I'll get you involved in like Olympic lifting. And I was like, oh, fuck off, dad. Like, I don't want anything to do with that. Like, you know. <laughs> You know, just at 13, you don't want to do anything your dad tells you you should do, you know. And, like, I've literally gone back and, like, apologized to my father now. I'm like, Dad, man, if I had taken it up at 13, I would be so big right now uh, and I would be so much fitter. Um, so, and, like, I've just, I really found that I loved it. And, um, like, yeah, I've, I've just, the last four years of just, finding that and, and getting involved in it and whatever. And like I've found it's not, it's not unique within the sort of heavy music world. Like lots and lots of other like people within metal really love it as well. So. Oh yeah. I play basketball for years, but football, yeah. American football is my favorite, but I, I do have uh, two things. One, when I was in sleepaway camp and I went to the same sleepaway camp for like six years from like yeah. 10 to 16. And wow. when you first get there, you have, to, you have this sheet and you have to sign up for so many activities to, okay. and one of them was Australian football. And I was oh, like, I was wow. like, what the f is this? 
So I signed was up for it. Was that because there was a there was an Australian like camp? Not at all. It was just it was just a, there was somebody that was a counselor there from Australia that knew all the rules. That's, so I yeah, remember yeah. I remember you had to like bop the ball and you could pass it. You could pass it with your foot. And it yeah. was it was so different. But I played it every year for like five or yeah. six years. I had a blast. Yeah. D weirdly, if you play basketball, there's it, I mean, the game itself is not similar, but the strategies are very similar in that there are forwards, there are backs, there are centers. The strategy is around like getting it in, you know, mm. scoring a goal at the end. Uh, like there's a, there's a lot of similarities in the, in the, in the playbook. I remember the I, I want, like every three or four steps, you have to like throw the ball at the ground and bounce it back to yourself. And that was yeah. like the hardest part for me to like figure out how to master. Well, the, here's the thing that's just become a, um, uh, it's not that you have to bounce the ball. You can actually just touch the ground with the ball. Oh, okay. So you just, it's just that the ball, ball has running, to touch You can just kind of like doop and then keep going. Okay. Yeah. So if you watch like old, old, old footage of when the game was first invented and that sort of stuff, they just run around and they would like touch the ground with the ball. They wouldn't bounce it at all. Um, probably for a couple of reasons. One, they hadn't thought of it at that point. Two, um, probably the ball itself with technology has, in, has in evolved in that the original ball was probably far heavier, um, probably made of leather, you know, all of that sort of stuff probably didn't bounce as well. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, once the, the idea of bouncing the ball, because you have to do it at a really specific angle. Oh, I've never worked for me. Yes. Yeah, or else it just bounces that way exactly. or that way or, you know, forward so you've got to you really got to do it at the right angle and yeah it's it just wasn't a thing for such a long time and then it, it became just the default part of the game yeah so so yesterday when i was on stream uh cj of disgust was one of our guests and yeah. he he mentions i'm gonna go hit this billy and me and my buddy are like what the fuck is he talking about and he comes yeah. back and we're like did you just go punch a kid or something? And, he, and he's like, no, I hit a billy. And we proceeded to find out that's what the term is for smoking a bong. Yeah. <laughs> Can, do you have any idea how that came about to be called a billy? Okay, so <laughs> so going all the way, it's kind of getting back to your, like your gold hunting. Uh, okay. <laughs> so um, the old, like back in the day when, you know, bush rangers were a thing and, so it's kind of like outlaws or, you know, kind of like, um, you know, rustlers or whatever. Um, so, you know, Bushmen, you know, bush rangers, you know, anyone who lived on the land, all of that sort of stuff, if you had to camp out and you had to make a fire, you know, everyone is, is because, you know, Australia was a British col colony, you know, tea, drinking tea is a big thing here, right? So if you were going to boil your water to make a cup of tea, um, you would hang. So you'd have like a thing over the top of your fire and you would hang basically like a, a tin um, of water uh, over it to boil your water, to make your cups of tea. And that's called a billy. Oh. And so boil like, it's the same sort of thing, right? You're like by bubbling it. Boil, yeah, yeah. It's, boiling the water right like okay it bubbles away so it's like a billy i had never yeah. ever heard that term before yesterday and then we also yeah. found out that you guys call them cones yeah but that's not a joint no it's, that's the cone piece in the because my brain tells uh, yeah, me a cone a is like a coned joint but that but you're yeah. saying like the bowl is called a cone yeah yeah but i mean so um we, I do know that like the actual joint itself is called a cone, like you know, because it's it's like it a sort cone shape out before you before you kind of tie it up, right? Mm. Before you um, twist it off, but um, yeah, no, we call cones that yeah, like the cone piece of the of the bong, the thing that you know when you smoke and you pull it out. Yeah, that's the that's the cone piece we call it. Okay, we call that a carb. I don't know why we call it that. Huh. Called a maybe carb. like a carburetor of a car. 
I don't know, but you have to pull the carb to get the airflow correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, See, here in Australia, I don't know. I don't know if this is a thing in, in the U.S. or not, but um, <laughs> there's a real problem with people going around cutting up people's uh, garden hoses. Oh, no, that's not a problem over here. Why okay, do they do so, that? So what they do, you go and cut, you know, your length of garden hose about that long and you get like an orange juice bottle, like, you know, like the plastic orange juice bottles or like an iced coffee yeah, yeah. bottle, you know, like the plastic ones. Yeah. And you punch the, punch a hole through it and put the garden hose in there and put a cone piece in the end of the, and you, you use the, lighter to like melt the garden hose to the cone piece and you got yourself a homemade billy right okay and so then you pack so, your so this is there. a problem though people are, are stealing hoses and cutting them wow yeah and you just see them you just see like homemade bombs just like lying around on the ground like oh yeah i've, I've smoked out of an apple like, yeah, someone came here to... yeah. i smoked, I smoked and, out of an apple before an orange yeah, all, all that, kinds yeah of... that's like same sort of ingenuity involved there is like people like it's, it's making, science and this is the funny thing man like this is so much a part of our culture like i've never smoked from a bong before i've never like but i know how to make one like th this is gonna say like if my folks watch this they're gonna be like oh my god like you, you're a drug fiend you don't like i've never <laughs> i've never smoked from a bong before Hi mom, hi dad. Hi mom, hi dad. I'm smoking weed right now. Yeah, they're probably gonna. They, this is gonna be pretty enlightening for them. But I. That was for them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, well, let me ask you a few questions. <laughs> yes, yes, see. yes, please. <clears throat> so, like, <clears throat> California, right? Like, what what part of Cali, Cali are you in? I am in what's called the high desert, coincidentally. It is about an hour. <laughs> it is about an hour. It's super hot. It's about an hour and a half outside of LA. If uh -huh. LA is here, I'm kind of like right here. And then Vegas is like right there. So I'm like, uh, okay, yeah. Vegas is about three hours this way. LA is about an hour and a half this way. Beach okay. also an hour and a half this way. Okay. So it's still called Southern California. It's just like the most Eastern part. Yeah, okay. of Southern California. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Um, but I'm originally from Florida. Oh, okay. The You're definitely in a more side. progressive state now. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really like Florida. It was, um, I mean, I lived there for 23 years. It rains yeah. every single day at exactly the same time for about 45 minutes. And hurricane season it sucks. Right. Did you live there when Dexter was on? No, but I've seen all the Dexters. Yeah, same. From from Miami police and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know Dexter's coming back. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I, the, this the kicker of it all to me yeah. is you've seen all the episodes. Yeah. The Trinity the Trinity Killer is confirmed. Yeah. It's it's got to yeah, be a flashback well. or something. It has to be. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean the guy died. They also said his sister is in it too. That that also has to be a flashback. Deb, Deb, yeah, Deb's in it. That's all I know. Um, so, well, my, my question is actually not so much about Florida, but uh, is what's the how close are you to where is that to San Francisco? San Francisco is about ten hours north. Oh wow! Okay, so that's like at the top, and I'm so way at the bottom. Way. I'm I'm really I'm probably like an hour and a half from Mexico. Oh wow! Okay, I'm way down right. there. So I only ask because. Uh, all of the Dirty Harry films were just added to Netflix here, and uh, or one of them. Anyway, uh, I was watching them the other night, and I was really thinking to myself, like, for this like super progressive uh, city that Sa San Fran is, um, having Dirty Harry as the sort of like one of the you know many things that San Fran is noted for seems really like at odds because he really stands for like quite uh antiquated and like almost fascist views mm -hmm. like and i really loved dirty harry when i was younger but i don't think i just i just don't think i had the sort of 
right mindset about it or, or, or like or enough knowledge to i was like yeah he just kicks ass and he shoots people and stuff it's great but you know, looking more into it i'm just like man and i looked into it and yeah like the san francisco like like mayor and all of that sort of stuff really objected to like the last um dirty harry film being made there and being about san fran because they were like this isn't the view this isn't the like image we want uh, for our uh, for our city and all of that sort of stuff. It's not well, Dirty Harry is not so much a western, right? I, I, no, I, no, no. I, I don't think cop. I've ever seen it, but I'm really familiar with obviously most of Clint Eastwood stuff. But I don't think I've ever yeah. seen it. Yeah, so he's a cop, right? And he's just like, and he's the kind of like it's that real. He might have even been the original one. It's like you know the the chief, the captain of the police force is always on him, like Harry, you asshole, Harry. You know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he's always, you know, costing them money and he's a bad PR look for them because he's always out there just shooting. He's like, well, you know, I got to take out the trash, you know, like. And, That's actually a decent, <laughs> a decent uh, impersonation right there. <laughs> um, and so, and, and he's like, really like, I don't, I don't give a shit who you are. If you're a scumbag, I'm going to, I'm going to take you down, you know. Um, and. It's yeah, it's just. I mean, it was made in the seventies. The last one was made in the late eighties. So like the the films themselves span twenty years. Like there's a, there's a lot. And um, yeah, I was really just like, man, it, it's like San Fran has always been a super like you know super progressive kind of place, and especially in terms of like sexuality and that sort of stuff. I've it actually surprised heard. Me that it was, like, I, I've heard that. Like, yeah, uh, Jimmy Sam- Harry, he's that guy. I have heard that San Fran is one of the hardest cities to live in because of the cost of living. It's like the, like the average rent there is 3000, 3000 American dollars a month, a month. Okay. Yeah. But that's a lot that that's triple what I pay rent. Jesus. Um, and their gas is really expensive, but it's kind of turned into like a tech empire where all the rich people live in that area. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I've only went there once for uh, 49ers versus Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings are my absolute favorite team. Yes. And we've never won. We've never won a Super Bowl, but today we do. We've been to four and we lost them all. <laughs> oh, oh, no. I wasn't oh, alive no. when, they, when they went to all four of them. But if they went, if they went now, I'd, I'd have a freak out moment for sure. Minnesota is where it's the right that... smack in the middle of the u.s all yeah. the way at the top right below yeah. canada right and is it like and it, let, let me get this right in the nfl is there an east and west conference like in the nba uh there's they're split into four north right. north south well there's there's nfc north nfc south uh afc north afc south okay so d- technically the east is it's not really east and west um, I don't really know how they put it together, uh, but it, it's four teams in this one, four teams in this one, four teams in this one, et cetera, et cetera, to get to 32. Right. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. So, in turn, all right. So, are the are the Timberwolves still in the NBA? Yes. Yeah. Are they East or West Conference? They are Western. Yeah, thought so. Even though it's. Kind of it's probably more dead different. center right, but it probably lies one side of the line. Yeah, it, 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 even though it, like a team is like labeled the East or West, it's kind of doesn't really matter. It's uh, I don't know, whatever to me, whatever. I'm a LeBron lover, and he happens to be on the Lakers, yeah. my 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 team. So I root I root for the Lakers, and just, with him going there, it just helped me uh, root him root on him more. But I'll tell you what, man, do you were you was this news over there when it happened? I imagine so, but where were you when Kobe died? Um, I was away, I think. I was maybe in Melbourne. I was I was down seeing some shows down in Melbourne or something like that. And yeah, I woke up to the news and yeah, it was like... Was he was, he was my like, Michael was Jordan. Thinking. So it, it was that one, that one punched me right in the gut. Took me yeah. a while to get over that one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember, yeah, I remember all, like, lo- lots more, like, musicians probably impact me a little more 
than than sports people. So you know, when you know when Chris Cornell passed, like that hit me like a brick. Or Chester. Um, Chester, yeah, I was in I was in Melbourne again for that one. Um, woke up to that news, and I like had to tell my friend who like we we had kind of come up on Lincoln Park, and yeah, that was just such a shock. Um, Prince, when Prince died, like that, like uh, my my then wife uh, like woke me up and like sort of told me and just dragged me out to the lounge room and we put I've got the I got Purple Rain on vinyl. And we just put purple rain on and just kind of just sat there for an hour. Kind of a cool fact: Prince was a diehard Minnesota Viking fan. Of course, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, and the, we wear purple, so it makes sense. Dude, uh, have you ever? If you haven't watched it on YouTube yet, uh, look up Kevin Smith Prince documentary. And Kevin Smith was like it, Prince's people and Prince himself. Um, like commissioned him to come and film a documentary out of Paisley Park and and brought him out for a weekend. He was doing like a like a preview of his new album. You know how like in the later years his music got really gospely? When he went as the symbol? Yeah, well, even later, like when he came back to being called Prince. Okay, okay. Like, um, you know, you know how he got, you know, he, you know, he was a was he a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness? I am not sure. Jehovah's Witness, I think. Anyway, so he got really like quite preachy about God, right? And uh, he, so he, Kevin Smith originally got in contact with him because he wanted to, he wanted to use a Prince song in um, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And, uh, He's like, no, you can't, you can't use, you can't use my music. Um, but I own the rights to like tons and tons of songs. Um, so you can have the time. I'll give you the song by the time. And, uh, and anyway, and then he's like, oh, but I saw Dogma. I really liked it. And Kevin was like, really? Like, you, we really, you know, give some stick to religion, you know, like, you sure? Right, you right, right. Same movie, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I like. I didn't really like any of the cussing, no." Um. Anyway, and yeah, yeah, like so, he invites Kevin Smith to come out and and like film this documentary for the weekend, and like Kev's just going like, "I don't make documentaries, man." Like, <laughs> anyway, so all long story short, like the documentary, like just never saw the light of day. The footage he's got basically his. Prince's assistant basically revealed to him that he gets people to do this all the time and then he just puts the footage in a vault. There, he said there may be 50 or so documentaries just sitting in a vault that never, ever saw the light of day. It's interesting. So yeah. was it because he was a perfectionist or he just he just was an attention seeker? Or... Because he did... Just what Prince did. It's just, just what just, Prince did. That's just unusual. But but yeah. cool. He was he was a one of a kind cat right there. Yeah 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 for sure. Yeah. What what do you got going on the rest of the day? Uh, I've got a, I mean, programming the faction is part of it. So like that computer right there. It's it's jumping between songs, right? Or you got to load in all the new stuff. Yep, I load all it in uh, and do a new music hour each day. Um and. And yeah, just checking in all, all of my PR clients. I check in with my employee, Ophelia. She lives in Melbourne. I know I've spoken to Ophelia, but I've never well. just like emailed her back and forth a couple of times, but she's pretty cool too. She's oh, great, man. While she's, I'm thinking about it, she's the one who I go through to set up uh, interviews through Collision. Hell yeah. Set set me up an uh, uh, interview with Mary from 2 Octavia. Yeah, okay. Can do. Yeah. I've, I've, tried, do. I've tried a couple of times and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's it. I never, I never hear from him again. But uh, okay, that that would be yeah. a cool one. And uh, I said I saw Stepson's opening for North Lane. Well, I imagine that's not going on now because of the yeah. That was a that was a one off show, I think. Um, but yeah, it got it got postponed because of COVID. Yeah, that would that seems that seems like it'd be a big one. 
for them. Yeah, so that was it. That that show was at the Sunshine Coast, which is about an hour and a half north of here. Um, and that was like at a very new venue that's just opened. So they wanted to put on like a couple of really strong shows to to kick it off. Cool. Tonight I have to somehow figure out who my I'm, t- tomorrow I'm shooting episode 2500. It's like wow, a mega, what? mega milestone. So I've been commissioned to find my 10 favorite submissions ever. And I already Amazing. know two of them. Uh-huh. Because I've only given out, I think, eight, 10 out of 10s ever. And one yeah. was for Wind Waker and one was for Stepson. So those are two bands that will be and on the Octavia list. Octavia recently. Oh, you're right. Uh, for uh, Sound of the Rain. So I'll probably put them on there. Uh, but the other seven is going to take me all night, dude. I, yeah, yeah. I just don't know how I'm going to figure out the order. Are you going to go order. down? I'm like, all right, what did I give nine and a half? Yeah, I, look at I think ones. it's going to start at like the... Well, I don't ever... Minus like posting it, saying the score, I don't really have anything written down. If if a band gets like a 9.3 or above, they go in like a folder. So I'm just yeah. going to have to go through go those through folders folder and kind of like... Oh, yeah, I remember this one, this one, this one, this one. It's going to take me a while, but should be should be a fun episode. If, Hell yeah. So you said it's 10 a.m. when we started. It's so 11, now it's 11. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that would be 9.20 a.m., I think, is when okay, cool. I always do the stream on on Tuesdays and Thursdays, which would be Wednesdays and Fridays for you because you guys are living Perfect. in the future. Yep. You yep. guys are your way. The day's already happened. I haven't gotten there yet. But um, if you ever want, we do all those on on Microsoft Stream or Microsoft Teams, yeah, which is kind of similar to Zoom, but it allows me to have like up to a hundred people on camera at once. Uh, so, oh, wow. so we just started doing that. If you're if you ever wake up and you're like, let me just go and see what this fool is doing, blah blah. blah. Uh, just yeah, yeah. jump in the chat and message me, and I'll shoot you the link when you jump in and read some vans with us. Um, yeah, sounds good. I'd cool. love to. Hell yeah! Uh, if you're if you're down tomorrow, we could we could we can get you in there. I definitely am. Set that alarm clock. Here, Set that alarm clock. I'll be expecting you. Cool. Well, Tim, I appreciate you, man. This is uh, this is a lot of fun. I'm sorry we had the uh, the issues in the beginning, but we worked it out. Ah, at, at the Faction Live, if you haven't already, please go download the free app. It's awesome. There's a ton. There's so many good local bands that he plays on there. But he also throws in the occasional Megadeth or all all kinds of bigger bands also. But it's I I love the fact that. If I turn on Sirius or I turn on the radio or, or my buddy's app, which is called Dirty Radio, it's not local bands. You guys play all the local bands, and that's what I really, really love about what you guys do at the Faction, for sure. That's that's the point of what we do, man. We want to lift everyone up. We want to all, all boats rise with the tide, man. Well, I appreciate you, sir, and I appreciate you constantly sent feeding me new music, new submissions. I love to hear them. And you're also a supporter of the, sh- of the show, and I appreciate you being a supporter. And I uh, I look forward to tomorrow. We're we're a goofy bunch, uh, so be, you'll be in for some laughs. And Sounds good, man. It'll be a good time. Thanks so much, dude. Thank you, sir. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Cheers. See you, man.